That's yeah. right. So the purpose of today's presentation, the presentation is basically to describe how artificial intelligence is deployed on board. Um, um, and the reason or the main driver for this, this I took just two papers just from last month. Um, unfortunately, these images are uh, pretty common today. Um, the waters are more congested than ever. Um, there is a global shortage of experienced crews on board. And one of the things that did not uh, advance at the same rate of increase of ships today is basically the technology on board. So many crews, many captains, many people on board actually do have access to technology, uh, uh, great technology uh, in their smartphones, in their laptops, but ship navigation basically stays the same. And this is one of the paradigms that we want to challenge and want to discuss today. So unfortunately, today there are roughly around 4,000 uh, ship incidents annually. Uh, uh, it costs us billions in annual cost. Uh, it's very hazardous to our planet. Uh, uh, not talking about uh, oil spillages, etc. And these are things that are common today and happen uh, any day now. Now, why these incidents occur? So basically, first of all, it's important to understand 90% of these incidents actually occur in congested areas. So near ports, near shore, uh, 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 less in open sea. And today's existing navigation tools are just not suitable for these congested areas. Uh, I was a Navy uh, radar operator. And one of the challenges in uh, operating radar safely are actually about making sure to correlate and uh, uh, respond correctly to uh, the situation. But you always need some cover with the human eye uh, to assess the situation eventually. Uh, on the left side here, you can see an image from a captain's blog navigating through Singapore and Malacca Strait. Uh, you can see how basically the sensors just produce a lot of noise and they throw this noise on the operator, uh, which basically leads to the fact that three out of four accidents today are caused due to human error. Now, how can we improve that? Um, so safe navigation for ships is a big domain. It's one of the biggest challenges of the industry. But in Orca AI, we decided to focus on these six safety challenges or safety use cases. Uh, on the left column, there are three use cases for the ship. One, uh, the fact that navigation through, uh, low, low, uh, uh, through congested waters and in low situation and awareness means that ship navigation in congested waters is hard. Uh, there are many distractions due to many inputs that are creating confusion and uncertainty in the bridge. And there is no real effective onboard training for officers on real scenarios. And this is an inherent problem in the industry where crews actually change between three to six months, every six, three to six months. Now on the right side, the right column, we identified these three use cases for the office. So when you look on a ship, you actually understand that it is part of a fleet. And there is no real uh, time office visibility uh, to monitor the near misses and the risk patterns for the shore side. Uh, also, most of the shipping companies have their own policies. Now, these policies, the SMS, is not being enforced effectively, meaning that today's fleet manager should just speak to these captains state to them how they should navigate. But the world is very vague and it's not black or, black or white. There are a lot of grids. Uh, and God forbid there is an incident. There are no real-time voyage records in case of incidents, which is easy to really understand what happened. And these are the domains that in Orca.ai we decided to focus on. So for the crew on board, we have developed a real-time safe navigation platform. It increases situational awareness in congested waters. It reduces the human errors and reduces the dependency on humans when operating the ship. It reduces the workload as well. It basically helps everyone navigate in a more easy manner. Now, when we started to developing the technology, we actually understood the biggest, the biggest problem today. So according to Colreg and uh, rule number five, uh, each vessel should basically perform all uh, actions in order to avoid collision and use all available uh, measures. Uh, mainly speaking, by the way, about uh, uh, 
hearing and seeing. Now, deep learning algorithms in the field of computer vision have really advanced dramatically over the past 10 years, and they are production ready. We use these deep learning algorithms to perform the common actions as the watchkeeper for the uh, purpose of detection, tracking, sensor fusion, and classification of targets in real time. This data is automatically collected from the entire fleet and uploaded to ORCII's secure cloud. Now, collecting data from C is a unique environment. Not all data is relevant uh, uh, for training these deep learning algorithms. This is why we created a pattern protected uh, algorithm to upload data properly from ship to shore. Now, some of you may think that, okay, what's the problem? Uh, open sea and open sky, you just need to detect the targets. But as mentioned before, the use case for the OKL on board is not a, a open sea where you have less accidents. It's actually in these congested waters where things actually develop very, very fast. And there is a big level of uncertainty for purpose. Now, what the captain actually sees in the system in real time. So we talked about reducing overload. So it's an accumulation of sensor data from the ship, like the position, the speed of the ground, uh, the gyro compass. Now on the image, you actually see the real-time video streaming with image recognition, or object recognition in real time for all maritime applicable targets, from buoys to fishing nets to fishing vessels to navigational hazards and other ships. Now the system automatically detects and tracks them and classifies them, and under the hood, it creates a risk prioritization algorithm that actually highlights a, a collision risks with other ships. In this case, the AI algorithm that is trained on multiple use cases uh, is understanding, understands that the vessel on the port side is actually in a collision risk, while the vessel that crossed our bow is actually not in a collision risk. It does that by projection of all the ship's uh, sensor data on the same plane and start to calculating the risk per target. Now, the important thing to understand here is that the system actively actually detects targets and fuses all these targets with all these sensors in order to create the risk prioritization. And, and when the image is very cluttered, and it has a lot of clutter, the image is very hard to understand how to navigate, the system actually highlights what's most important. And this is what we found to be most important for uh, reducing the overload and reducing anxiety. Now, what else can we learn? So the system actually automatically records these uh, uh, near misses or these incidents, but it then uh, we can actually create some more interesting insights accordingly. So for example, sailing here in congested waters, the system automatically starts recording uh, uh, these near misses or boat crossing, dangerous boat crossing. It, it then uploads it to the cloud where it's being uh, analyzed by both machine learning algorithms and human labelers in order to produce the largest collision risk database in the world. And this is what we have created here in OKR. You can see this um, uh, video, for example, prioritizes the risk on the top right corner highlights the risk and upload this information for uh, the captain and the office to actually investigate uh, what happens. All these videos are recorded and saved uh, automatically on board and also uploaded to the cloud. And I'll show you what we do with this information. Now, um, the system shines in highly congested waters and I wanted to show here the use cases, the use case of sailing in congested waters in South China Sea uh, near fishing vessels. Now, uh, when you look here on the top uh, upper, upper right corner, you can see all these AIS information of fishing vessels and fishing nets. And I wanted to show you how it actually looks like when the ORCAI system causes that automatically. So again, uh, projected on the map, on the uh, orange part, you can see our own ship fitted with Orca.ai. And on the blue part, the blue dots, you can see other targets, either visual targets collected by the system 
or ALS targets. Now, one of these ships actually had AIS, so we knew what the name was. And you can see how it looks like when sailing through China Sea at night and having a near miss uh, with one of those fishing vessels. Now, what is machine learning doing in the cloud? They actually get access to all the recorded data from the ship, and they apply multiple filters and analysis in order to highlight for the fleet manager what is most important. And this is the next part of the system that I want to talk about. So after realizing that a system on board uh, uh, is crucial for safe navigation, uh, we need to understand today that the shipping industry is also changing. Uh, as mentioned before, the waters today are more congested than ever. It took this number, almost 10% increase of number in the last five years of ships uh, globally. Uh, today, there is a big problem of labor shortages, crews are younger and less experienced. And uh, last but not least, today's uh, uh, world fleet is more connected to the internet than ever. Uh, today is standard uh, post-COVID pandemic, and there are many uh, fleets today that start to unlock and understand uh, the potential of data-driven decision-making. And this is exactly what we uh, actually uh, enable in Orca. So, we upload these recordings of near misses to the cloud. Uh, we also upload the entire voyage data, high resolution sensor data, plus imagery data. So what can we learn? In this use case, for example, when looking on safety, we broke down a voyage from uh, Galveston to Houston to Antwerp. And uh, throughout the, the way, we look, for example, on the speed of a ground chart. And our machine learning uh, anomaly detection algorithms highlight these speed drops automatically. Now, when we want to investigate why these speed drops occur, we actually couldn't find any reasonable answer to that. Uh, we found out, for example, that in this speed drop, the vessel dropped its speed from 15 to 1.5 knots for three hours in the middle of the North, North Atlantic Ocean. And when we highlight this and provide that to our clients, to the fleet managers, uh, they actually learn about the risk patterns and what is going on in the fleet. Now, the way to enable them to access this data is via the uh, fleet safety dashboard. Now, within the fleet safety dashboard, they have online access and they have full visibility to the safety events. They gain also access to actionable insights, mainly trends and benchmarks about their fleet, and it allows them to enforce the company policy. So how does the dashboard look like? For those of you who didn't see it before. So basically, the fleet safety dashboard has a risk score per fleet. This risk, is, this risk score is pretty complex. It takes into account not only the occurrences of events, but also where these events tend to happen more and the context. So is it inside a port, open sea, near shore? Now you can see here in the dashboard that it actually sum, summarizes and accumulates all these uh, risk patterns. And let's say we want to investigate a specific uh, collision risk event. So first of all, we gain access to seeing where and when and how many of these collision risks actually occur. Uh, and you can see it on a map. They will also support to see it on maritime charts on ENCs. And then you can see all these events and all these information that describes these events, like the distance, CPA, DCPA, location. When uh, pressed upon, the, the fleet manager can actually see the video recordings it was recording. Now, we worked a lot on making sure that the system is highly reliable and uploads all data to the cloud. Uh, and it was a big challenge. Uh, to summarize, the shipping industry is changing. We can see it with our clients and we can see what's going on um, about how uh, safety managers look on data. Uh, ship safety is critical for today more than ever due to the fact that uh, the oceans are more congested than before. And these AI-based navigation tools will become eventually a must-have on board every ship.